10, 20 years, something like that. For me, that's long term. Um, my prediction is that work will be optional. Optional. Op what happened in AI this week? Let's say it's never a boring week in AI. This week, we had billionaires fighting publicly, Microsoft and NVIDIA dropping billions like it's pocket change, a trillion dollar deal appearing out of nowhere, and then we had to try out the new Gemini 3 from Google. So we asked Gemini the trillion dollar question on everyone's mind. Are we in an AI bubble? Gemini didn't panic, it didn't sugarcoat, it didn't dodge, it gave us a new world. We are in a rational bubble. So this is our word of the week. Straight from Gemini 3, supposedly right now the smartest AI out there. What does a rational bubble mean? It means when prices may look insane today, but the technology is real. The future is not inflated. Just the price today is. Sundar Pichai echoed the same mood this week. I expect AI to be the same. So I think it's both rational and there are, there are elements of irrationality through a moment like this. Simple, the future is definitely AI, but the prices are running way ahead of revenue. Now for the quote of the week. As always, Sam Altman is in the news. Look, I don't sleep that well at night. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I feel a lot of weight on, but probably nothing more than the fact that every day hundreds of millions of people talk to our model. The CEO of the world's most powerful AI lab, the man in the middle of trillion dollar bets, and a civilization scale technology, just admitting he cannot sleep. No drama, no spin, just the weight of AI said out loud and the decisions that he must make every day that affect 800 million users. Let's move on to what happened in India. And at the top of the list is Reliance that stepped into the AI race in Andhra. Google had announced earlier this year a major AI investment in Vizag, a one gigawatt data center and Reliance answered immediately and decisively. This week, Reliance confirmed a one gigawatt AI data center for Andhra Pradesh, creating a twin facility to its gigawatt scale AI data centers in Jamnagar. This was paired with a six gigawatt solar power project to support it. Six gigawatt of power. This capacity is significant enough to power approximately five to six million homes. AI is a power guzzler and power is the bottleneck of AI today. The whole world is figuring out how to power these AI factories. Without electricity, how will you run AI? So this may be Reliance's secret weapon. And this is Ambani energy, literally. And next up, AI factories are hot. Everyone is investing and Tata too is getting into the action. TCS had announced earlier this year that they were going to build a one gigawatt data center that would require about 6.5 to a $7 billion investment. Now TCS has announced a strategic partnership with TPG for a joint data venture as it targets AI leadership. Over $2 billion of investment is planned for the Hypervault AI Data Center Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of TCS. The demand supply gap for AI compute in India is particularly stark. The country generates nearly 20% of the world's data, but accounts for only 3% of the data center capacity. With Hypervault, TCS and TPG plan to develop liquid-cooled, high-density data centers with the power and network capacity required to support advanced AI workloads across major cloud regions. And next up is India falls in love with the PowerPoint killer. The Gamma app dropped a big stat this week. 
Gamma has 9.5 million Indian users, 15% of its total user base of 70 million users. This made India Gamma's fastest growing market. Who knew we Indians loved PowerPoint so much? And guess what? They did this with zero marketing spend, no customer acquisition cost. And Indians found it themselves and adopted it really fast. It shows one thing clearly, that if an AI tool works, India can scale it instantly. Now it's time to talk about compute because we can't have only US and China in the semiconductor game. This week, India's first intelligent silicon chip was launched. It was a quiet but important deep tech milestone. Azimuth AI and Seat launched Arca GKT-1. It is India's first IP-powered intelligent silicon chip. It is energy efficient, globally competitive. It's an edge AI chip that will be used in future devices, EVs, meters, sensors, and industrial systems. This is India's own silicon design, a proud moment for India, a milestone that signals how far India's semiconductor ecosystem has advanced and how much further we can go. Now moving on to Karnataka's deep tech flex. While AP is building the AI factories, Karnataka said, cool, we will handle the software. The state announced an 1100 crore deep tech fund for AI, quantum and hardcore deep tech startups. The hardware can be anywhere, but the brain power needs to stay in Bangalore. That's the home term advantage. And if home turf advantage is what India is looking at, it is making AI literacy a basic life skill with free training for all. The government launched Yuva AI for All, a four and a half hour course open to every citizen. English, computers, and now AI, that's the new baseline. The mission is official, train one crore Indian and make India the AI knowledge capital. Now let's talk about corporate India and whether it is adopting AI and how quickly it is adopting AI. Three big reports dropped this week. The first was the Biz Staffing Comrades survey, which showed us that 59% of HR leaders don't fully trust AI in hiring because they feel it is still biased. They are not rejecting it, they are just being cautious. Then there was the EYCII report, which showed that there are multiple pilots running across Indian corporates, but AI spend is still under 20% of IT budgets. Again, cautious, not reckless. Then there was the IDC deal report, which showed that 45% of firms are still in the early stage adoption of AI. Corporate India is moving in a steady, measured, intentional way. That's all we had for India news. Now let's move on to World News of the Week. And we can't start talking about what's happening in AI in the world without talking about the AI bubble. This week, the world couldn't decide. Are we in a bubble or a boom? Because both signals were loud. Markets were up this week and soaring ahead, but the rally could not sustain. If you listen to NVIDIA, the boom is just started. It blew past earnings, another record quarter. And Jensen Wong dropped the biggest number of the week. The world will spend three to four trillion per year on AI infrastructure by the end of the decade. One direction, more GPUs, more AI factories, more spending, more money to NVIDIA. Some of the smartest money disagreed. Peter Thiel sold, SoftBank sold all its shares in NVIDIA, and Michael Burry placed anti-AI bets. Their message, AI prices are running too hot. But money kept pouring in as Warren Buffett from Berkshire Hathaway took a big bet. He accumulated $4.3 billion stake in Alphabet over the September quarter. 
betting on their AI. Then Jeff Bezos is launching a new $6.2 billion AI company, a frontier model startup to challenge OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic. And Elon Musk, of course, couldn't resist and immediately called him a copycat. Bezos is coming back to run the company as co-CEO. He shares the role with Vic Bajaj, a physical chemist and a veteran from Google X and Alphabet's Life Sciences Unit. And Musk is busy promoting a Banksian robotic future. But, you, but AI and humanoid robots will actually eliminate poverty. He also updated the Tesla mission to be sustainable abundance, saying robots and AI can finally eliminate global poverty. Two billionaires, two bets, one signal. The AI race is too big to sit down. But since no one can agree, we asked our favorite bots, is there an AI bubble? And four out of six said that, yes, we are in a bubble. Now let's move on to the circular AI economy, which keeps getting bigger and bigger, and the investments keep getting crazier and crazier. Microsoft already owns 27% of OpenAI. That's no secret, but now, is investing in Anthropic 2. And NVIDIA could not sit this one out since it is already invested in every major model lab. So this week, Microsoft and NVIDIA invested $15 billion in Anthropic. And Anthropic will plow back $30 billion into Azure and NVIDIA Compute. Now all major AI models are running on NVIDIA chips. Grok, Gemini, OpenAI, and Cloud. So how does this loop go? Money, compute, more money, more compute. The AI loop is tightening. In a related news, Google dropped Gemini 3 with strong multimodal understanding, better agentic behavior, and smoother vibe coding. It's already live within Google Search and the Gemini app. Try it. Definitely less verbose than ChatGPT. More direct and more to the point. Initial user feedback for the product is great. But let's get back to the money. The AI infrastructure race keeps moving on. Google dropped us a surprise this week with a $40 billion investment for AI cloud and data centers in Texas. This investment will be made through 2027. The most AI enabled nation. With that announcement, tell me what's, what's next in AI factories, uh, Jensen. There, there's, a, there's a beautiful story about how Saudi Arabia is building AI refineries and how building AI factories, or oil refiners to AI factories. I love that. And then came a geopolitical bombshell. The US and Saudi Arabia finalized a $1 trillion AI deal. Yes, $1 trillion to build AI factories and massive compute hubs in Saudi Arabia. The AI infrastructure race has officially gone global and now AI is officially the new oil. And now let's talk about Meta and Mark who are making AI mandatory at work. Meta confirmed a major shift. All their performance review will now include how well you use AI. Not just output, but AI powered output. Meta is the first big tech company to make AI a core job skill. Soon we expect that this will be part of every company. Are you using AI? If not, get started. Moving on to what happened and what was bizarre this week. There was a video that was going viral, an AI cheating pen, promising to read questions, solve them, and whisper you the answer during the exams. But when reviewers actually tested it, total flop, slow, inaccurate, laggy. Students were quick to respond. We are better off with a phone camera and chat GPT. And there is an AI grandma that is taking over TikTok. Actually 100% AI generated. 
She is hyper realistic and she is going viral. Welcome to 2025, where even a dadima might be synthetic. Millions of views, but also millions of users asking, is this real or is this AI? Watch for yourself. She looks pretty real to me. What's your relationship advice for 2026? Stop calling him your soulmate when he can't even reply to your text. The controversy is that fake AI-generated photos of Katrina Kaff and Vicky Kaushal with their new baby are circulating all over social media, despite the couple not having released any official photos of their son. These images have caused confusion and disappointment among fans to learn that the pictures are not real. And moving on, another viral hit generated by AI. The viral TikTok track, I Run, millions of uses, and then the producer confirmed the vocals were AI. Spotify removed it, but music is synthetic now, but it's busting up the charts. So that was what happened this week in AI. But one thing is clear, AI isn't slowing down. AI is accelerating. See you next week.